Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Major League Baseball for Wednesday, April 3rd. Back to our normal schedule here. Uh, hopefully you caught the, uh, you know, kind of last minute of show for Tuesday. Uh, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of whiplash here, turning right around and doing another one here. Uh, but we've got a ton of games on Wednesday, a bunch of day games. Wednesdays usually deliver with a full slate of games all day. So looking forward to... Uh, to that slate, of course, as a reminder, check us out on Dub Club if you aren't already at QR code. The link in the show description gets you a free 10-day trial. We'll talk a lot about some of the benefits as to why you should be there later on in the show uh, based off of some uncertainties. There are only a handful of picks that we're making tonight. I'll discuss every game, kind of talk about the ins and outs, but there's a lot of games that are priced well and a lot of things that are a little bit concerning uh, to me in, 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 in B and C grades that I'm just not really feeling like we should be pulling the trigger on. There are a lot of games this season. We don't have to bet them all. We can pass on a few. And that's what we're going to choose to do today uh, as we move forward. Without further ado, we'll start off at 1 p.m. Eastern and go Reds and Phillies. We're going to jump right on it with the Phillies here. B-grade pick at minus 180. As the model says they win 67% of the time. That should make the price more like minus 200, the A-grade threshold. And again, you get these A-grade thresholds for every single game with us over on Dub Club is minus 174. So we're just a few cents high of that. Not enough to take me off of this pick. It's a B-plus grade. I think it is worth investing in. Zach Wheeler is a really good pitcher. And anytime we have the opportunity to back him, you want to take advantage of that. It's very similar to what we've talked a lot about this season so far, about if we can fade some of these bad teams, we want to take advantage of that. And we'll talk about when we haven't fitted the bad teams, and it's worked out really well for us uh, with a couple of examples later on. Uh, so for the most part, you know, we've done a really good job of taking the favorites, and it makes sense. And passing on them when the value just isn't there. A lot of times the value isn't there with Zach Wheeler. It, of course, wasn't for us on opening day despite him pitching really well. Uh, the price wasn't right to take advantage of it going up against a really good Braves team. Going up against the Reds is a different story. Frankie Montas looked pretty solid in his uh, debut uh, this season here with the Reds, of course, trying to bounce back from, uh, you know, all the injuries and, and the issues he had last time. The underlying metrics, pretty mixed in that. Of course, it's only six innings, so I'm not going to take too much uh, from it, but uh, neither one of these guys gave up a run in their first start, but Wheeler's underlying metrics were stronger than, than Montas, and that's the historical data that we have that would support that. So uh, as good as Montas looked in that first start, I don't think he's bad at all. I think he's a very solid pitcher, uh, but the Phillies will have an edge on the mound from innings one through nine on this one. They have the better pitchers up and down the team, the middle of the, uh, of the, of the deck relievers, the end relievers, et cetera. Offensively, it's pretty uh, split, but the edge pitching wise is big enough to push the Phillies out to a solid minus 180 B grade pick to start the day. Uh, folks also take note, of course, on this one, there is uh, some weather, uh, potential for this one. Of course, you get the full weather report, how that affects the total, et cetera, uh, over on Dub Club. Also at 1 p.m. Eastern, we're going to take the Orioles here at minus 158A. Great pick. Orioles shouldn't quite get it done for us here on Tuesday, uh, but, you know, we never expect to win every single pick, unfortunately. Uh, we just are trying to win at a higher clip than the odds we're betting. Minus 158 is a pretty good price for the Orioles here. The, the, the Orioles here are the much better team better on offense, better in the pen, better starting pitching with Corbin Burns, who's one of the league's best, against Cole Reagans, who I mentioned in his first start. I'm not overly high on this year relative to the way he's being priced and treated in the expectations. I think he's a very good pitcher, an 88 grade for a guy like him with, you know, whatever the only 70 some innings he had last year uh, and before that was terrible is really good. So I'm as high on him, I think, as we should be, but I think we should temper expectations, of course. He's good. Um, he's not Corbin Burns yet. He might be, but he might just be average. There's still a lot of variability, a lot of question marks with a guy like Cole Reagans, as opposed to Corbin Burns, who you kind of know what you're getting. You're getting a solid pitch of the Orioles are at home. They have the better everything in this one. They should be much bigger favorites in this. Silent thinks they went about two out of three times, which means they should be priced uh, in the minus about minus 188 is what the model says. Uh, so the A-grade threshold here, minus 162. We're going to lock in minus 158. Just eeks in as an A-grade pick for us here. Uh, Orioles not going to win every single game. They didn't get it done Tuesday, but love them to bounce back here Wednesday in a game where they have a massive edge just about everywhere and the smallest edge they have 
is when you're backing Corbin Burns, which is never a bad thing. So going to back the rolls here at minus 158 for a grade play, kind of in the play of the day type vein. I don't know what we're going to do for the play of the day here officially. Black Book Sports has removed baseball offerings uh, from their website. So if you're with us on Black Book Sports there to get the plays of the day, it's kind of in flux right now. Need to you know need to get to the drawing board and figure out how we want to handle this, what we want to do. So for right now, there's no play of the day for Wednesday. This is a very strong play. It was the play of the day for Tuesday. It didn't get to the window for us. Thankfully, our extra credit play on Twitter did. Uh, so, you know, I love this pick here. I think this is priced great. I don't think we're going to get many opportunities to back Corbin Burns at home against an offense that's subpar like the Royals at a price like this very often. So I want to make sure that we are taking advantage of that. Uh, only not an official play of the day because we got to figure out what we're doing with that now that we've kind of been thrown that curveball. Pun intended here. This, this, this is a baseball show, of course. 110 p.m. Eastern, Rangers at the Rays. Now we enter into the set of games where I kind of give you the shrug emoji. Right now, absolutely nothing to get excited about for this one. Sideline has this at Rays winning 52% of the time, which means the Rays should be favored at minus 109. That would make the Rangers plus 108 a D grade pick. It would be, I guess, the best side to do at this price. And, and, and that's not a crazy way to approach it. It's just take plus odds on the Rangers saying, who the heck knows? It's a coin toss type game. Uh, but, you, you know, me personally on this one, the, the way I'm looking at it is, yeah, I think the Rangers offense is is better. And, of course, this is a player-based model in case you don't remember. So, you know, Josh Young for the Rangers out. So it's, it's not like that, that's not been accounted for. The Rangers have the better offense here. Um I think relievers are pretty much a wash. Really, it's about as close as you can get. Starting pitcher, pretty much a wash. Aaron Savali, uh, pretty solid. Uh, Nathan Evaldi has been very solid, very consistently good. Um, underlying metrics weren't great in his first start, but nothing to be overly concerned about. I mean, it's two good pitchers. Uh, you know, a razor at home gives them a little bit of an edge. But, I mean, this is a coin toss game. So if you're going to play it right now, I'd say Rangers plus 108. But, I mean, the models should be plus 109. So you're not getting enough value to really be worth it. I mean, if I'm playing that, it's just because I got an itch to play this game uh, in the afternoon. There's two other better games. We already talked about the play at this time. So there's five one o'clock games. Um, I think your two best bets for the one o'clock slot are the, are the ones we already talked about. First five pending. We'll get that out tomorrow in the morning. If everybody on double club, look, you got a free trial there. If you came on during baseball season, you're still in the free trial. You'll get a lot of information. If not, jump on the free trial, check it out. See if you like it. Uh, if you do, if it's helping you make money, if it, the information is good, we have such a high return rate. People love being over there. Uh, you know, I'd love for you to stick around uh, and help support us, help keep us in business here. We really appreciate that. So maybe you have a pick on this in the morning. Maybe the line moves. Maybe something changes on it, and we're able to, um, you know, get a good pick on this game. But for now, nothing official. I think it's priced well, and we're getting into the time of the year where. <laughs> only a week in where we've got a handful of games like this. We were able to play a bunch of games early on, take advantage of it. Uh, we're already kind of backing down a little bit on a few of them because the market's starting to figure some things out that we kind of knew from the start. But as always, folks, do remember to shop around because the price can matter. I'm, I'm looking at one book here because I don't want to shop around myself and give out these picks at the best line of every single book. Why is that? Because you may not have access to all those books. I'm not trying to do that here. I want to do that personally. I want you to do that personally. But if we do that, then maybe we're showing the value of shopping around, which has value. We're trying to show the model value here, which means we have pulled from one book when we make these picks here. So I'm looking at Rangers plus one weight. Maybe you can get plus 110. Now that's a lot. Maybe you can get plus 115. Now you're talking a game like this for the Rangers here. Uh, you know, A grade threshold. Again, you get this for every single game on double call, plus 126. If you got plus 125, I'd wing it. Say it's an A grade. B grades plus 116. If you got plus 115, I'd say wing it, give it a B grade. Maybe you can shop around and find that. Make sure you have multiple sports books at your disposal. If you don't yet, Bet US is a great place to sign up. The link in the show description will take you there. If you're going to check it out, click that link that tells them you came from me, which keeps them happy with me. We're happy with them and we love their support. 125% bonus on your first three ever deposits. It does come with the rollover requirement. It's a common thing for offshores. However, we will give you enough baseball picks. You'll be able to work through that. So check out that US if you haven't already. 
BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Two more 1PM games to talk about here. Twins and the Brewers. Uh, I told you yesterday in the show, hey, I didn't think it was price great, but if you're going to play it over on Dub Club, we had a first five play that we will be taking. That was that first five under four and a half that cashed for us in this one i'm kind of going to tell you the same thing i told you here for tuesday i think it's priced pretty well uh we don't have the first five markets out yet so we don't really know what to do with this here's the thing with the twins without royce lewis that offense takes a big hit and the, the model you know i'm, I'm not going to say it can't figure that out necessarily but i mean it, it's it's to take you under the hood a little bit and how this works, right? Baseball is an individual sport masquerading as a team game. It's not a team game. It's an individual sport. It's batter versus pitcher is, is so much of the interaction. You say, yeah, there's guys out there in the field and they're throwing to each other. Yes. But for the most part, this is as much of an individual sport as a team sport can possibly be. That makes it sometimes harder when a guy has an effect beyond himself. And we don't see that often. It's very rare that a guy has an impact beyond himself. The only other example I can think of like this has been um, maybe something with the Angels, with the Trout and Otani. Maybe there's some mental thing there with those guys being out at times. That team just kind of felt like we couldn't do anything and they, then they underperformed or something. Maybe Aaron Judge, with it, not in the Yankees lineup, really just affected how all those guys hit. But Royce Lewis seems to have an out, oversized effect you know, on the Twins. He's out right now. The model knows he's out and is pulling his production, but it seems like when he goes out, the rest of the team doesn't do as well either. It's kind of weird. I don't know if it's real. This is the fun part of being a statistician is you don't necessarily have all the answers, and I have to be very comfortable saying I don't know. I don't know. I wish I knew. It's possible he's having an oversized effect. It's possible that we aren't accounting for that properly in the model. It's possible that's just – randomly with enough injuries, you would expect some weird noise like this. And we've accounted for it properly. I don't really know. All that to say, that's kind of the concern you have backing the Twins. That said, this is a fairly coin toss scheme, but we lean Twins. So right now the Twins are about minus 105, minus 110 in that ballpark. That's the way I'd play it if I had to right now. But I'm not locking anything officially here. You can see I've got the official picks now on the crawler there. It's partially to help me remember <laughs> what I gave because I'm looking at so much information over here on screen. But what that tells you there with no pick is no official pick on this right now. I want to see what the first five market is. Uh, I want to see what the line movement does in the morning. I, I just don't feel like we have to rush to lock this in. So that's why you want to be on Dub Club. You will get that update in the morning with all the extra information. You could hit me up on Discord. We have a lot of great conversation over there and say, hey, now in the morning, what would you pick? And I'll answer you back as fast as I can. Uh, so a lot of reason to be over there. Might have an official pick on this later. But for now, I think it's a pretty coin toss game. Chris Paddock, Joe Ross. Paddock's the better pitcher for the Twins. Twins have the better offense as Brewers offense is putrid. Uh, but the Brewers bullpen is solid. The Brewers are going to play a lot of close, low scoring games. I don't love playing under eight and a halfs, but that might be one way to look too, because this Brewer seems just going to play that. I mean, just that's just what's going to happen. It seems like with them. The issue with that, of course, is Joe Ross, below average pitcher. So um, a couple different ways you can kind of look, but nothing that I'm dying to lock in now. So all that is to say, if you're with us on Dub Club, you know, you'll know exactly what I'm going to do. But I just want to see what happens in the morning, see where our numbers are, see if there's a better play on it then. But as of now, Maybe twins, maybe under, but but I don't really love anything. And that's the same thing that we have here at 1 p.m. Eastern with the Angels and Marlins. Folks, the Marlins are struggling. 0-6. Um, um, I don't think the Angels are as bad as they're being made out to be. I have made that clear. Um, I think it's it's a little bit overhyped. This this Angels offense is solid, and, and as I mentioned, you know here um, they'd be able to get a few runs off Lazardo. Unfortunately for us, the Marlins couldn't score anything here, so we got the over with them on Monday, lost it on Tuesday. It's not the craziest way to look over here, where they're going over eight and a half, um, over nine right now is plus odds, over eight and a half is minus odds. That's kind of the way you'd look, but I mean, after watching that game here Tuesday, I'm like, I don't know, like. Do you play it all three games and hope you go two out of three? I mean, if you go two out of three, it's great, right? I don't know. I, this Marlins offense is just concerning. And Patrick Tinville's decent. Um, 
So uh, that's that's the fear. That's the way you lose this game, this over here. Uh, so no official pick right now. If I had to play it, I'd play the over. But this is a coin toss game, and it's priced pretty coin toss-ish. I mean, two respectable pitchers who can struggle, but who have potential in Patrick Sandoval and AJ Puck and folks, both of these guys uh, driving the struggle bus in their first start, but are not as bad as that. They're both very respectable pitchers. Uh, and, and I, and I mean that I don't think they're good. I think they're respectable, right? Patrick Sandoval, of course, uh, just got shelled in his first start, but it's underlying metrics weren't terrible pucks kind of, or he could not find the zone whatsoever. At this point, my personal take on AJ Buck, the Marlins decided to put him as the second guy in the rotation. So they have some faith in him. They're seeing something in him. If he has another start like his last one, I'm going to really start questioning that because that was terrible. Um, but that said, we don't want to overreact to that one start as terrible as it was. The model has what these guys did in the first start, and that's why it's pulling them closer to the league average. If both these guys get lit up again, they'll both be on the wrong side of 100 and get 100s average. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. No official pick on this one right now. It's over or pass from the standpoint of both of these pitchers got lit up last game. There's early season stuff. Maybe they can't find it. And if one of these guys gets lit up, you got a shot at, at getting to nine. If both of them get lit up, it's going to be over by the fourth inning. The concern of that is the Marlins offense, but there's enough. Angels bullpen isn't very good. Angels offense is that I think I lean over. I'm just not rushing to play this shit. I just want to see what happens in the March. No official pick right now, but over is probably the way I'd look. I'm just cautioning people on this one to think this through because both of these pitchers can be okay and they probably aren't as bad as they look last time. And I hate to do the same thing. I hate to be on whatever went else all last time simply because they there tends to not be a lot of value there. What I mean by that is everyone saw how, bit, how bad these pitchers were in their first start. And so people are like, oh, over, right? And I'm like, ah. I'm not saying it doesn't go over. It just means we don't typically have value. I'm always looking for value because that's how we're going to make money in the long term is the value. Um, you know, people, oh, we need winners. Yeah, we need winners, but we need winners at the right price because if I win 70% of picks at minus 500, I've lost money, right? So it's all about the price. And this over is, I just don't know if the value is there. That's what the model is telling us. Do I have the model to help us out there? So I don't know. Over is kind of the way I'd look, but. Man, these teams are confusing. This Marlins offense is confusing. They they weren't supposed to be good, but I didn't think they'd be quite this bad so far. Maybe they'll get a win eventually. I don't know. I'm not banking on it here. Coin toss game. Uh, so a lot to, to think over there. One game at 2 p.m. Eastern Braves with the White Sox. The White Sox will start Nicholas Nestrini. Uh, no grade there as he's not in our starting pitching database as of yet. Uh, he'll be opposed by Spencer Strider and folks – the model gives the Braves an 80% chance to win. I cannot remember ever seeing a number this high this early in the season. This is reserved for, you know, end of season. One team is tanking, giving up, you know. Um, but you've got the best pitcher in baseball right now, Spencer Strider, against what's more or less going to be a bullpen game for the White Sox. I mean, the stringy might go 4-5, or five, but... I'm not expecting great things from him. He's made four starts ever above double A. So you can't have that much confidence in him. The White Sox don't have a lot of great relievers. Their offense is terrible. The Braves have a top five offense in baseball, hands down. You know, you can argue, argue above that, but for sure a top five offense. They got probably the best bullpen in baseball. I mean, uh, the only thing you can make this worse is if this was in Atlanta. <laughs> um, but in Chicago, as it is, this is still a massive mismatch here. Here's the problem is that, you know, you're having to pay that premium for it. So be careful um, as to what you're paying right now. There's no line because the White Sox uh, have not officially announced the stringy and, and maybe it won't be, and maybe it'll be bullpen game or someone else. I don't know. I'm just going off what fan uh, fan graphs has uh, for this start. Um, but no, no line as of yet. Just be careful on the price. I talked about it a little bit here uh, on, on Tuesday's game that the, we picked the Braves on Monday and we, we did the show, got it out at night. And again, one of the reasons you want to be on Dub Club is I send the picks out before I even record the show. So you get it right away and can jump on favorites. You want to come and jump on the favorites 
early on more times than not, those numbers are going to get even bigger. Um, that line got out of control and jumped like 80, 80 cents or something uh, into the next day. You know, nothing I can do about that, right? Um, just be careful because we didn't play the Braves here on Tuesday for a reason. We're like, the price just isn't valuable. In fact, the model had A-grade plays on the White Sox. First five in full game, first five run line, full game, I think, run line. And, of course, they won the game. So um, the model is to help us figure out where there's value. And sometimes there's value on favorites. Sometimes there's value on dogs. Sometimes the model is just helping you say there's value on this side, which means if you want to play this, I just pass, right? That might be the way you look. I, I don't know. I don't know where the number should be. So I, 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 we'll have a pick on this in the morning if, if, if the value's there. What I'm just trying to hammer into our heads here is that the Braves are overwhelming favorites. They are not locks to win. Baseball's weird. Um, make sure you're getting a decent enough price. If you're with us in Dub Club, you know exactly what the thresholds are that I'm looking for for the money line, A grade, and for the run line, A grade, which at this point, if I was playing the Braves, run line's the only way I'd be looking. Uh, so that A grade threshold again is available for everybody on Dub Club. Uh, that's the way I think we're going to go with this. I think we might get a little bit of value. I don't think the books will be this high on it, but if the books open up something like Atlanta minus 500 or something stupid, just run away. <laughs> don't even mess with it because that's too much. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what the numbers on this one. Some weather concerns here uh, as well. If you are uh, a hitter, as we're talking about, upper 30s uh, for that. So that'll, that'll drop the expected number of runs down as well. So something else to keep in mind uh, when you're looking at these totals is check out the weather. But again, if you're with us on Dub Club, you get the weather update with everything, exactly how it affects the total. So I'm taking care of you if you're with us on Dub Club, giving you all the weather updates as you need. That's one to check in on the weather on. 3.37 p.m. Red Sox and A's. We're going to keep this string of I'm not sure I like making a play on this yet. And so you may be a little bit disappointed here, folks, but that's just the way it is. I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not going to force pick. I'm not going to make a pick I don't like on, on a game just to have it. I'll tell you where I'd go if I would, but I don't really like a play on this as of right now. And the reason why is the model saying A's plus 139 is a B grade. What is that telling me? That's telling me the price has gotten too inflated on Boston. I talked about this, whatever, seven hours ago when I when I recorded the Tuesday show. I was afraid this was happening. I was afraid it was going to start kind of catching up. The A's aren't as bad as people, as they've looked. Their defense is terrible. Uh, the sidelines defensive writing on them is one of the worst in the league. Um, they're not the worst team in baseball. Ross Stripling against Nick Pavetta here. Stripling is... Uh, you know, Pavetta is the better pitcher, but Stripling's not terrible. I'm concerned about him going deep. Um, that's been the concern with him, of course, uh, all along in his career is that he, he'll he randomly, and I have more faith in him than, than Alex Wood, of course, the guy who's going tonight against the Red Sox, uh, because Wood just had way more shorter outings, I feel like. But but Stripling's a guy who's can go five or six on occasion at least. It's just sometimes he gets blowed up a little bit earlier and he'll only go three or four. I don't know how much that too was the teams who were using him. And how much he could just go if he's if he's on his own. We'll find out this year. I'll, I'll be curious to see. But um, five innings his first start, gave up some runs. Underlying metrics weren't bad. I, I, I'm not that concerned about him. He's a decent enough pitcher, folks. The the Red Sox have an edge on offense. It's not by much. They have an edge of the bullpen. But as I mentioned before, I've been mentioning. I'll say it all season long with the A's. Be careful with the A's because if the A's keep keep it around, they got some decent guys in the back. And the problem is when the A's fall down early and they get down by like four. I mean, I don't know if you if you live bet like take an alternate run line minus like seven and a half or something because they're going to throw their bad pitchers and it's going to be a runaway because the rest of those guys are terrible. They got a couple decent arms. The starting pitching matchup close enough. I mean, the Red Sox should be favored, but not by what they are. So here's what I'm telling you on this game: the model says A's plus one thirty nine is a B grade. It's got a grade at plus 142, so we're close to an A grade. What I'm saying is I'm not playing the A's until it's an A grade. I'm fading the A's at a, at a B grade, absolutely. I'll fade the A's at a C grade, absolutely, because they're a bad team, and I like fading bad teams. I only want to back a bad team if the value is there. And I'm just, you know, we don't – I don't know if it's there yet with the A's at plus 139. The model's saying we're getting close, so something to think about. No official pick on this. I want to see if we can get a better price. Maybe we play the first five on the A's. Kind of avoid some of the bullpen issues. Of course, the Red Sox bullpen's not the strongest in the world either. So that's another way to look at it. So I think we'll probably end up with a play on this one eventually, just because as we get closer and closer to game time, I think Red Sox money's going to come in. So I think the A's will be at some point a good price. And here's I just want to make sure we're all on the same page on this. I know I'm rambling a lot tonight. I'm sorry. 
the A's are going to win this game at whatever probability they win it. And we don't know what that number is. And of course you say there's only one game played. They're going to win or lose. Absolutely. But the concept is this type of game. Hypothetically, let's pretend this type of game exists and it happens 100 times throughout the season. And it doesn't even have to be these two teams. It can be any two teams. The, the, the underdog is going to win it however many times they're going to win it of those 100 games. The model says 45%. Well, let's say it's 46 or 47 or 44, 43, or whatever. It doesn't matter for the purposes of the explanation. So the reason we're concerned about the right price is because we're going to lose 50 whatever of them and we're going to win 40 whatever of them. We need to make sure that the price that we get on those 40 winners is more than enough, not just enough, more than enough to offset the losses of those 50 whatever. That's how we profit. It's that simple. We got to make more in the 40 some odd wins than we do in the 50 some odd losses when we're taking a dog like this. Plus 139, maybe, maybe one a little bit better. Let's see. Let's hold off. No official pick yet. Let's see what happens in the morning. And again, if you're with us in Dub Club, you will get every single update. We'll talk about it on Discord. I will take care of you if you're with us over there. 3.40 p.m. Yankees in the Diamondbacks wrapping up the series. Carlos Rodon and Merrill Kelly. Uh, of course, Merrill Kelly, a guy we love at home. Carlos Rodon looked good in his first outing with regards to the number of runs he allowed. Underlying metrics were a little bit of a mixed bag for him. This is coming off a very disappointing season. A lot of questions on Carlos and I still have that haven't been answered from Bravaldez for the Astros. Answered those questions. Passed with flying colors. Let's see what Rodon does here today. There's a handful of these guys that I think are going to be very interesting to watch uh, early on in the season, see how they're doing. Rodon's one of them. Here's the thing on this one. I've made the comment I love banking the Yankees anytime there's value on it. The model's got Yankees minus 108 as a B grade. I hate fading Merrill Kelly at home, too. So no official pick on this one. It's a choose-your-own-adventure book. It's Yankees or pass. The Yankees' offense is really good. Um, Radon is questionable. I don't really know what Radon we're going to get. There's still a lot of questions. High-variance guy, for sure. But he, but I still think he's he, – he might be great. He might be good. He might be decent. I don't know. But he's not going to be – terrible this season he's he's got good enough stuff i don't think he's going to be uh you know kyle freeland no offense to kyle freeland i'm sure he's a nice guy yankees bullpen's good so the yankees at minus 108 you 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 can't play the diamondbacks here at whatever the opposite of that would be you know it's not a good enough price uh the yankees are 54 percent to win according to the model minus 108 is a decent way to look i'm just i'm not locking in now I, I, I just want to see the markets in the morning. I want to see where the number goes. Um, my fear on this is that the Yankees numbers need higher. So if you're watching this and you're and you're looking at numbers, I have to assume money's coming in on the Yankees. They're five and zero. Oh, they're playing right now. Uh, we'll see if they if they pull out. They're losing right now as of the time of this recording. But uh, money also always seems to come in on the Yankees. So I assume that numbers need higher. So if you, if you like the Yankees, I mean, jump as fast as you can. Um, that's kind of just the general rule of thumb. Uh, and again, if you're with us on Dub Club, you got these projections hours ago. Uh, you got the projections many hours ago, probably before the lines came out. And you got the official pick here that the that our official pick here for now would be Yankees minus 108 B great if we were locking it. I'm just can't pull the trigger fading Merrill Kelly at home. So uh one of the man uh as an interesting game to watch. I think it'll be one of the better games of the night or the afternoon here, but uh no official pick for that one, but we're back to some more official picks here. 4, 10 PM Cardinals, at the Padres love this one. Padres. We're going to play minus one. The money line price in the Padres right now is almost an A grade. It's like a B plus grade, but the minus one price does get into a grade territory. So of course you can remember we can make this market by betting to win a certain amount on the money line and then risking that amount on the run line creates that market for us. You're looking at about even money if you do that because you're getting minus odds on the money line, plus odds on the run line. I have the Padres here. Model says they win 62% of the time. So hey, well, whatever happens, the 10% of the time or whatever they win by one, we'll push. No big deal. It is what it is. But uh, Joe Musgrove and Zach Thompson here. Musgrove's had concerns. I've talked about that. His last start out, he looked good enough that even if he isn't vintage Joe Musgrove, I still think he's better than Zach Thompson. I still think we have an edge of the Padres to start the game. I still think we have an edge of the Padres with the bats. The only issue, of course, is the bullpen. So another way to look at this, as always with the Padres, I mentioned it here on Tuesday, 
check out the first five market. We need to be price sensitive. As I mentioned on Tuesday's game, I like the Padres first five. The issue is that you're, you were paying like minus 145 versus minus 130 for the full game. Is it worth it at that point to pay 15 cents more? I don't know. The model said slightly less value on the first five, slightly more value on the full game. That's why we have models to kind of help calibrate and figure that out for us. But Padres first five would be definitely a way to look as long as the price is good. The way to mitigate the minus odds, in my opinion, on this one is play this minus one if they win by one, whatever, who cares? But even money, a great pick on the Padres. We win as long as they win by more than one and we push if they win by exactly one. They're the better team here. And I like trusting Joe Musgrove. Not to be great, just to be better than Zach Thompson. That's the only bar that we're asking him to clear. Last afternoon game of the day, a ton of great afternoon games here. Guardians and the Mariners. Logan Allen and George Kirby. Kirby, good. Allen, eh, he might be okay. Younger guy for right now. Not a guy we have a lot of faith in. As you can see, it's a massive edge to the Mariners with the guards, the starting pitching. We're going to actually take the under. The Mariners are favored in this game by a decent bit. They should be favored by a decent bit with George Car George Kirby at home. But I'm going to go under eight. It's minus 130. That's an A grade pick. Under seven and a half at reasonable odds would also be an A grade pick. You should be getting minus 105 even money on that. A grade pick there as well. Model projects six and a half. On average, we've loved these Mariners unders when the time has been right for them, which has been most games. We've played some of the first five unders, some of the full games under. We're doing better than we are. Uh, we're winning more than we're losing on those, which is really all that matters right now. It seems like the market's not quite adjusting to the fact that in the weather games, and by that I mean these places where it's been like 40 degrees and wind blowing in, and in the places like Seattle, the, the the ball's not really carrying very well, and our total should be a little bit lower. Everywhere else, the total should be a little bit higher on average, not every single game. Um, and the market's not quite differentiating that very well at this point. So uh, we've had more overs and unders. We've had a lot of games played in like domes and stuff like that. They try to put more of those games here in April. Uh, but the ones that have been further north and these weather type situations, the unders have been okay for us that we've done, barring the you know, we pushed the Phillies under on, on Monday because a grand slam in the 10th inning <laughs> type situation. Uh, so under eight here, a great pick models projecting at less than seven, really all about the weather, all about George Kirby um, being able to shut down a, a decent guardians offense and average guardians offense and this Mariners offense. I just don't trust whatsoever. So they might get a few runs here off of uh, Logan Allen, but then the guardians have a ton of great relievers that mitigates the concerns you might have uh, about Allen. But of course uh, he's a guy that, you know, has some upside okay so that also is is nice for us because a guy like logan allen might turn out to be a pretty good pitcher this year we'll we'll find out 6 45 p.m eastern pirates in the national i'm gonna say the same thing on this one as i talked about with joe musgrove here mitch keller for the pirates was absolutely fantastic last year it was a revelation for them um at the end of the year he struggled he struggled in his first start the model knows all of that and there was a time last year with Mitch Keller, I don't know exactly when, maybe like July-ish, where his grade inside line was in the upper 70s, which is pretty dang impressive. Uh, it slowly came up as the season went along, and now it's up to 94. And that's not great. It's not It's not bad by any stretch. It's good. It's better than average. 100 average. Um, but it's going the wrong direction. I have concerns about Mitch Keller. Absolutely. Um, there's no reason not to. Here's the thing. Even as Mitch Keller's going the wrong direction, he's still decent. And I'm trusting the model to see all that and put it all together and say, yeah, he's not as good as he looked before. Um, he's not great, but he's not terrible. And again, kind of as I said with Joe Musgrove against Zach Thompson, I'm not asking him to be great. I'm just asking me better than Trevor Williams, right? So it's a pretty low bar. Uh, I think he can clear that Bartrover Williams is not a guy we have a lot of faith in. Pirates offense is better than the Nats offense. Pirates relievers are better. We're going to the Pirates here. Minus 147. It's a B grade pick. The A grade threshold for this one is minus 140. So we're seven cents away. Model thinks Pirates win the 62% of the time. I also love fading bad teams. And as you'll probably know, the Nats, one of the weaker teams in baseball, probably trending the right direction. Their offense at one point last year was more graded than around 70. So now it's at the 74. Their relievers last year, I think, were in like the 130s. Now it's 112. So, so I think trending in the right direction. Uh, but I think it's a long, slow rebuild. The Nats aren't there yet. Um, as much promise as they had with certain things last year. 
Uh, I still think they're 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 always away. I still think they're not very good. So fade the Nationals here. Uh, take the Pirates minus one forty seven B. Great pick. Don't love what I've seen from Mitch Keller. But all he's got to do is outpitch Trevor Williams, and then the bullpen can take it from there. And I have faith that we can do that. 17 p.m. Tigers and the Mets. Uh, folks, here's all the asterisks and caveats on this one. Uh, first off, we like the under. Probably no matter who's pitching, you're probably going to have a hard time betting this one, at least right now, because um, no one knows who's pitching. <laughs> um, the uh, Tuesday game was rained out. I mentioned that I would have called it uh way earlier I, I was really surprised that they waited that long and then tried to delay it. It, it 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 just didn't look great it looked like they were gonna have to play through some rain at some point uh they, they're gonna be making up thursday afternoon um here's the issue there's still some rain in the forecast here for wednesday it seems like i mean we're 24 hours out over to, uh, almost 24 hours out now so so i don't really know at this point um we'll see but maybe the rain clears out they can start this at 8, 8.30. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how much it rains, how, how wet the field is. I, I don't I don't know. Uh, this game may not happen either. And I don't know who's pitching. Uh, this projection here was what we initially were supposed to have if there was a game Tuesday. Uh, the Tuesday game was uh, Casey Mize, I believe, and uh, Adrian Hauser. Now we're going with Tariq Skubal and Jose Gatana. Skubal's really good. I talked about him on the opening show. Love this kid. Uh with six shit out innings his first start. Underlying metrics look great. 73 grade. I mean, he was great last year. We were talking about him. So, like, man, this guy's coming up out of nowhere for the Tigers. Like, thought he might be decent, but like, really good. Love this kid. Um, if he's pitching, I don't know, pick a number, go under. It doesn't really matter. If he's not, and we're and we're getting it doesn't even matter if it's Quintana or Hauser. I think they're both probably gonna be pretty similar because they're both right around league average, a little bit worse. Um, Casey Mize is a little bit weaker, uh, a little bit below the average as well. So it's a big difference going from him to school. I don't know what they'll try to do. Uh, given that there might be some rain, if, if it was me personally, knowing that there might be rain, this game might be delayed. I would just say, Hey, school, we're going to go Thursday. Uh, there might be a double header Thursday at this point. It would be one possibility. Right. So I wouldn't want my ace out there in this 40 degree weather, windy, wet, wind. 25, 20 mile an hour wind blowing in from right field. I mean, this is going to be massive pitching from the weather. That projection of 5.6 runs is insane. You can see negative 24. This is this is like you're just making stuff up at this point. It, I, it, it, it it's terrible, 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 terrible hitting weather. Um, you know, Scoobol goes out there if if this game happens and and the Mets might not get a run. <laughs> Um, heck, they didn't get a run for 10 innings, so maybe I'm not <laughs> saying the most shocking thing in the world. Um, so you just got to figure out who's pitching on this one. If it's Scooble and who cares for the Mets, under seven, yes, 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 all day long, all day long. And he might push because it might not happen, but whatever. It's just going to happen. A great pick. I love it, love it, love it. If it's Mize, check back on the projection. We'll update. We'll see. I mean, the weather's going to tell us to go under, but seven that we push on seven. We had an under eight A grade for Tuesday. Um you know, if it, if it, I assume if it's mine, it, it won't be quite seven. And so we'll get seven and a half at least. That's probably an A grade. It's just, just a lot of question marks. This is why you want to be on Dub Club because I'm just speculating at this point. I don't know who's going to pitch. Uh, and, and you'll get that update it's delivered right to your phone, right to your email, right to your whatever you want to get it to. Uh, whenever we know what's happening, give you the official pick. But I, I'm leaning under, looking under, loving under, depending on the situation. You just got to figure out who's going, what the number is, and what the grade is. But there's like a 90% chance it's a grade under. Um, and then there's a whatever percent chance again doesn't happen. We have a double under Thursday. So come back for more later. We'll find out. Under is the way to go. Almost as surely if it happens. 7.40 p.m. Eastern Rockies and the Cubs. I love fading the Rockies. It's good times. Um, what an easy winner with the Cubs. Minus one. You could have played a minus, I don't know, eight. Uh, would have been a fun alternate line to hit. Um, no line on this one yet. This Cubs look like they're having a bullpen game. Um, so that's going to be fun for them. Their bullpen is okay. Um, Cubs should be big favorites in this one, even in a bullpen game. Model gives them a 70% chance of winning. So assuming it sticks to be a bullpen game, this projection will hold. The only way it changes is if 
we get word that someone's going to go a bunch of innings that we have enough data on to impact that. But if we have generic bullpen game where it's like one or two innings a guy, this is what the projection is. Um, they should be big favorites. Cal Crunchell is a guy I talked about last time. I still have a lot of faith in him. I'm really concerned about what he's going to look like in course field. Gave up five runs and in five innings in his first start. The underlying metrics were bad. I mean, these Rockies pitchers are terrible. And like I keep telling y'all, their hitters are terrible too. They only look good because summer games in course, they can put up a bunch of runs when it's, you know, light breeze out and 80 degrees at that altitude, you know, and then the big part, because they don't want home home runs. So it's like, you just like hit the ball to the outfield and it's open grass because it's the biggest park in baseball. So, uh, you know, the A's, it looks like the market's adjusting, correcting a little bit. And like I said, the A's aren't the worst team in baseball. Uh, believe it or not, folks. I know they look terrible. I know they've, they, they're they setting records for errors. Like, But just hear me out. They're not that bad. They're bad, but they're not that bad. And and, and so we're going to get to a point where we aren't going to be able to fade the A's because it's like the prices have caught up, and I think they're already here. We're a week into the season's here, but the Rockies are terrible, and people have not figured it out. So who knows what this price will be? We'll find out. But, I mean, I love the Cubs on Monday. I love the Cubs on Tuesday. We'll see. Again, if you're with us on the club, you get all this information. Why not sign up? Free trial. Hopefully you like it. You can support us. I want to take care of you people here. So sign up if you haven't yet. And we'll get an official pick on this one here come morning. But for now, no line, no official pick. But it's hard not to think the Cubs are very likely to win. It's just all going to be about what the price is. Not a lot of night games here on Wednesday. 8, 10 p.m. is the only game at this time slot here. There's only, uh, this will be our fourth night game. There's only one late one here uh, after this, but Blue Jays and the Astros. Another game that the pitching matchup is fascinating. Chris Bassett's had his ups and downs. Christian Javier's had his ups and downs. Javier looked great against the Yankees in that last start after having a really down year last year. I made the comment last year, if y'all watched the show, many of y'all are with us last year, and so we appreciate your continued support here. Uh, it, you know, I was really concerned about Javier all the NEC through the year before in the World Series, uh, the pitching the, the World Baseball Classic thing. Um, you could tell his velocity was down. You could tell the numbers showed his velocity was down. You could tell he wasn't right. He really struggled last year, and that's part of why his grades at 98. Pete Christian Javier is in the 80s. Very good pitcher. Um, underlying metrics against the Yankees were pretty mixed. Six innings. It's small sample size. I'm not going to overreact. I'm going to react. I don't know what to do with it, really. Um, I'm, I'm really curious to see what he does against Blue Jays. Like I mentioned already, Framber Valdez passed his test with flying colors. Looked really good uh, here in his um, second start of the season. Javier, we'll see. Same thing. He's going up against an offense that he should be able to handle because this Blue Jays offense is just decent. They're they're better against lefties. So with Javier being a righty, he should be able to have some success here if our theory is correct and Javier's going to have a bounce back year because his arms finally rested. Uh, that was part of the problem with the Astros last year. They had so many guys who were just so fatigued, so many innings pitched last year. Um, we'll find out because last year wasn't great. So to me, it's Astros or pass in that regard because I'm more optimistic about Javier because I was down on him last year. Um, I had a really good reason as to why I should be down on him last year. And now I said all last year, I said why he was going to be, you know, why he was going to continue to struggle. And he did. And now it's time for him to do better because he, he did it the year before. Uh, so it's Astros or pass. Uh, right now, uh, the issue is the Astros are priced at minus 140. Model says should be minus 137. So not really great value in their favor. They should be favored. Um, so the sides, a tough ask for right now. We will see what happens in the morning again, maybe an official pick later. Uh, the total, we got the total on Monday, all from the Astros, because of course the Blue Jays didn't get a single hit. Took the over on Tuesday, three runs in the game, and, and the, the, the Blue Jays only got two in the, in the, in the ninth. It was one run through eight innings. It wasn't even close. So I'm kind of feeling about this game like the Marlins Angels, right? It's like overs have been doing better in baseball, especially again in the non-cold, non-weatherish games, right? So we, we know that that's been established. If you hadn't heard it from, from someone else, you're hearing it from me here. So you just take the over, um, you know, all three games, and, and we've split already, and now you got to get the rubber game. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's B grade right now, over eight and a half right now, minus 120. It's B grade. You take over nine. You should be getting at least even money. Um, models projecting 9.3. So maybe that's the way to go. 
Uh, I, I'm a little bit leery of that, though, because the Blue Jays have scored two runs in two games total against the Astros. And again, I kind of I kind of think Javier's going to be OK. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It, it's it's Astros are passed, but the price isn't great. It's over or passed based off the price. But this Blue Jays team might not be that good on offense. And you can see the models adjusting. This is the lowest offensive grade we've seen for the Blue Jays since this core group of players, since Vlad came up, since they signed Springer, since Bichette came up. I mean, you've had this core, and of course, they you know they lost. Uh, they had a third baseman as part of that, right? They had, they had Donaldson for so long, and they had Chapman. But I mean, that one guy shouldn't change that much, right? But I mean, they just not that good you know they lost belt at him last year i guess i don't know that they're, they're just they're offensively they don't look that good so i'm a little bit leery on the over for that i think the ash was the way to go i just don't love paying minus 140 i'd love to get a you know uh, a minus 120 would be great but even minus 130 would be better so we'll see again updates coming on double club in the morning we'll see what happens there and then one late game here giants and the dodgers we actually know who's pitching here for the first uh you know, in this game, it seems like for the first time uh, here, <laughs> Kyle Harrison and Tyler Glass. Now, Glass now is really good, better pitcher. Kyle Harrison is not bad, though. I don't have a problem uh, backing him in general. I think we backed him in the first game. Uh, underline metrics weren't great, but again, just one star. Glass now, of course, sounds going to be two. Um, his underlying metrics are a concern as well. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, he's looked, he's he's done fine with the number of runs he's given up, but the underlying metrics could be a little bit better. So, uh, something to keep an eye on there. Uh, with him going forward, but I'm not overly concerned. I still think he's the better pitcher in this. The Dodgers offense, of course, is really good. The Giants, uh, assuming the Dodgers bullpen is better. The Dodgers should be big favorites here. They win this two out of three times. Here's the problem is they're priced pretty right here. The model says it should be Dodgers minus 193 um, and it's Dodgers minus 210. So it's like, eh, eh, you know, same thing with the run line uh, model says it should, and you get all this run line information, what the price should be, the A grade threshold, B grade threshold, et cetera, on the club run line and reverse run line. I got to tell you, the reverse run line for the White Sox is hilarious because the probability they win by more than one and a half in a cold weather game against Spencer Schreider is like 3% or something stupid. It's like broken. The model's like broken because it's such a weird outlier game. So you get to laugh at stuff like that too with all these projections when, when things just go haywire and you're like, wow. And model says the run line price for the Dodgers should be plus 108. They win at about 50% of the time. You haven't paid minus 105. So people are going to be like, oh, well, let's just play the Dodgers in the run line. We've talked about it before. They're a great run line team. Um, if you're going to back them, that's not a crazy way to look because they tend to win by by multiple runs when they do win uh, historically the last couple of years. Um, but I mean, you know, this Giants team isn't terrible. Kyle Harrison's not terrible. Like, you know, I, I kind of want at least plus odds on that. So not great value there either, uh, but not great value on the Giants either. Right now, the best we know on the Giants would be a D grade as well. This price pretty well. Total's priced pretty well too. Uh, models position 8.4 runs. Total I'm seeing is eight and a half. So, I mean, we're, we're eyeing a pretty well-priced game. For now, I'm a broken record. I know we just didn't have as many picks today, unfortunately, but hopefully some good information for you. And again, you can sign up for the free trial of Dub Club. And in the morning when we get the update, we'll see. Maybe there's a play on this game. Maybe the lines have moved. Or maybe there's a first five play on this game uh, because sometimes that might be the way to look here, uh, especially if you're looking to back the Giants, you avoid that bullpen. Uh, which can be a little bit shaky at this point. So uh, that's all we've got here again. Remember, QR code or the link in the show description will get you that free 10 to trial. Check us out on Dub Club. Get in our Discord chat. We have a lot of fun over there. As always, thanks for watching. Best of luck. We'll see you.